Hi, I'm Stephen Thrasher with the Village Voice Running Scare blog, and I am here today with Chris Geidner of Metro Weekly and the Polyglot blog. Thanks for talking with me, Chris. Hello, Stephen. So I wanted to talk to you. Lots of, lots of big gay legal news in the past couple of days, um, starting yesterday with uh, your big question in the White House. And first of all, I wanted to ask you, how often do you go to briefings and how many questions have you actually asked before this one before? Um, well, whenever, uh, starting when, uh, when, when Jay Carney pretty much came in as the press secretary, mm -hmm. I pretty much started going um, whenever regularly, whenever, uh, I mean, they're, they're only held on days uh, when the president isn't traveling. Um, when he is traveling, they just hold uh, a, a, a gaggle on uh, the, on Air Force One. Um, so, and I, I don't do that. So, <laughs> um, on, on days when, when uh, the president is in town, uh, all day, they they hold a briefing pretty much uh, every Monday through Friday, um, and, and that it, does is, he ask? Does he answer or ask questions? Allow LGBT uh, publications to ask questions pretty often, or is it kind of unusual? Um, it is. I mean, Carrie Elleveld uh, with the Advocate had started attending the briefings when. Uh, Obama had come in, and there had been some LGBT presence prior to that, um, but uh, Kerry was was getting called on regularly. I, I, I don't know if you recall, um, she had been, been pushing on Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the briefing, along with a, a, a couple others for, for quite some time. Um, and she didn't and, get an interview with him, with Obama, until, he was, until she was on the way out the door. Until she was yeah. leaving, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, but then uh, both Metro Weekly and uh, the Washington Blade are, are there regularly, as is um, uh, the advocates. Andrew Harmon's there uh, on occasion. Uh, Deb Price from uh, the Detroit News is there. Uh, she'd been up in uh, at Harvard at a, a fellowship for a while uh, for the past year, I think, um, and but has been in the briefings recently. Uh, Carrie Olivelle now is with Media Matters with Equality Matters, and uh, she has been to a couple of the briefings. Um, in recent weeks, so there, there's now actually there are there are days there there was one day when when all of us were there, and oh, so wow. you had Chris and Chris, you had Andrew, you had Carrie, you had uh, Deb, um, and, and so it was uh, a, a a good a good grouping of of people who who are there regularly, and 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 Carney does call on us. So you got you got asked uh, or you got allowed to ask a question yesterday, and um, were you surprised at the answer you got? Um, I I think that it didn't completely surprise me because the I mean the president obviously has said for for, for a long time that he supports the repeal of DOMA. Um, I mean, when I, the way I found out about it, I think via emails and fundraising emails from from the nonprofit groups. Um, really framed it as, as big breaking news, which it was in a way, but also it, it's not a really different position he's had, but why did you think it was significant that he is supporting this specific piece of legislation? Well, I, I mean, I think for, for two main reasons, I think that there, there's always a difference between endorsing a specific bill because that that gives that specific legislation momentum and and makes it clear the White House doesn't endorse um, er, every piece of legislation. I've actually done a lot of writing about the fact that the White House hasn't endorsed um, any of the LGBT education mm -hmm. uh, bills, the Safe Schools Improvement Act or the Student Non-Discrimination Act, despite the fact that similar to the the previous statements about DOMA that they've, they've made statements that they support uh, safe learning environments for, for all students regardless of, of sexual orientation, gender identity, and anything else. Um, but so, so there is a difference, first of all, just when, when you have a, a 
a specific piece of legislation that that the sponsor can then say, look, the president of the United States, the White House, backs this bill. Um, but then second, uh, substantively, they, there's a difference between supporting repeal of DOMA and supporting the Respect for Marriage Act because the Respect for Marriage Act goes a step further um, with the certainty provision that's... Uh, contained within it. Um, and the certainty provision, what it says is that if you are, I mean, starting on Sunday, if if you are legally married in New York... Which will be, um, yes, uh, getting to cover yeah. lots of fun things about that in three days. Yeah, so it, if, if that happens, if you are a married couple in New York and you move to, to say, Ohio, um, that has an anti-gay marriage amendment, um, you, your marriage under federal law would still be recognized hmm. if the Respect for Marriage Act I is enacted because um, what, it, what it says is, is that the, the government will basically, the federal government for federal purposes will look to whether or not the, the marriage was entered into legally in the state in which it was entered into. So is, um, is Obama legally on a federal uh, way of looking at it? Is he trying to have it both ways when he's saying it should be left up to the states, but also endorsing this legislation, which sounds like it will give uh, you know a, a certain uh, prominence to federal recognition over a state like Ohio, where it's not recognized? Well, no. I, I mean, it's not having it both ways. It's. I, I mean, I think it, the certainty provision certainly uh, makes the bill more difficult to pass uh, because it is, it, it is, it is an additional step. But I, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that the, the federal government, I mean, all of, all of the reasons in terms of having stability, having uh, all, all of the reasons why people in, in states like Massachusetts, Connecticut, and soon New York push for the need to repeal DOMA um, also is the reason why the federal government wouldn't, would want something like the certainty provision because they don't want a couple to, I mean, especially think of it like if, if you have a, a, a federal employee who um, is working for the federal courts, say, in Massachusetts, uh, is, is married uh, to a same-sex spouse and gets transferred to Colorado, right. um, all of a sudden the person's benefits would change. Doesn't, I, I mean, it, it's, not, <laughs> it's not a good way to run a government. <laughs> and would the would the Respect for Marriage Act also take care of immigration issues and would like the Reuniting Families Act or legislation that's being talked about, would those things be necessary if this Respect for Marriage Act were and were passed? Well, the, there's I mean, two answers to that, unfortunately. Um I, I, I guess the the answer is is really it depends. Um and what what it depends on is whether or not you're legally married. The problem is that even if you repeal DOMA, a, a binational couple who lives in, say, N Nevada isn't going to be able to be legally married and therefore uh, be able to apply for a, a, an I-130 green card petition based on marriage because they're not married. Now, um, what, what some people have said is, well, they would be able, because of the certainty provision, they would be able to go to New York and get married. And, but that, that sort of gets into the, well, if they're able to, if they can afford it, if they, they want to, I mean, judging by, I mean, just look at what, what you're seeing in New York right now, the fact that what did Mayor Bloomberg say that there was like 3,700 people who had applied for, for marriage licenses yeah. already? Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, these are people who could have gone to Connecticut last week and gotten married, right. but, but they didn't. And, and so, I mean, what, regardless of the certainty provision and regardless of repealing DOMA, you're still going to have a lot of problems relating to binational 
couples who who can't get legally married whether whether due to the fact that they they just can't afford to to travel to it or just the the placement of where they happen to live and so that's why the uniting american families act actually creates sort of a a new uh category I think that, yeah, um, permanent partners, and that's what the the bill used to be called was when when it was originally introduced was the Permanent Partners Act, hmm. and, and what it would do is create a a new federal definition that would would not necessitate you to have a legal marriage. And the the idea of when it was introduced originally was that this was long before there there was any thought that you would actually get. The repeal of DOMA anytime soon, um, and so now there as as sort of everything's coming together more, and and it it does look more possible that a court could rule that Section Three of DOMA is unconstitutional. The questions about well, who gets lost in the shuffle if if DOMA is repealed, but you don't pass something mm-hmm. like the the the. Uh, Uniting American Families Act right. or the Domestic Partner Benefits and Obligations Act that's the 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 Tammy Baldwin uh, legislation that would uh, make federal employees who have same-sex partners eligible for federal health benefits. They would be in the same sort of position. Yeah, you know, it's been interesting to see how many people want to get married on the first day, and I realize there's jubilation about it. That's one reason. But I think so much of it is because... One, because it's legally murky. Two, people want to get married where they are. But in, in my experience reporting on these things, there's such a history of the law being taken away or the threat of the law being taken away. The Californians in 2004 and 2008 getting married and then having it taken away again that I think so many people have the fear that they have to do this right away before NOM or one of these groups finds a way to legally take that right away. Well, yeah, I, I definitely think that, I mean, when you've had those experiences, when you've had the experience uh, that, that they had in Maine, um, right. there, and, and when you had, I mean, just the experience in New York of, of having felt like you were so close right. uh, in, in 2009 and then, then end up with, with the bad Senate vote that, that happened a few years ago that we don't need to talk about ever again. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't have that. So I want to pause for just a minute to make sure we're within the YouTube frame, but if you have a minute, I want to ask you a couple more questions. Okay. 